horoscope for October of 2020 were Libra this month. We've got a full moon happening in your partnership sector. We've got a new moon happening in your house. And then we're going to end this month with another moon happening in your eighth house. So there are some shifts and turns available for us at an emotional level this month for sure. And I actually do believe that between the moons that happen this month, there are a couple things that you're going to be able to maybe bring some closure or some good adjustment to that have been on the table for a little bit of time now. So it's going to be a usable month for sure. Now, before we get into that, we have got the eat and greets continuing on this month. The friends are coming over, over Basil Farrington, Jessica Lignato will be here, Sarah D. Haven, Julio Pellegrini will be here, which isn't that last name just fabulous, by the way. Shakira Taborn will be here as well, and Shane M. Nygaard. So just lots and lots. And now, my friends, if you would like to watch the eat and greets on replay, add free you can come on over and join me on Patreon. I have headed over there, started a Patreon page, and right now the eat and greets are available over there. You sign up for $5 a month to be a patron, and you can take advantage of watching all of the eat and greets absolutely ad free. Now, if you don't want to be a patron, that is totally okay. The replays will still be right here on YouTube and you can also catch them on um, the podcast. There will just be ads that are available in there. So either way, the eat and greets are happening and I welcome you in fully. Also this month on the third and the fourth, I'll be joining Astrology University for the Summit of Astrology and World Events. And I cannot wait. I think it's going to be fun. I love a weekend of astrology learning. Learning, so come and join. It's free. If you would like to have the replay talks, you can purchase the all access pass, but to come and listen live is absolutely free. As well, on the 17th, I'll be heading over to Achutabava space and being a part of his nightlife speaker series. So you can come to that as well. It's free. We just ask that you register so that we can send you the link. Okay. All right. That's all of the eat and greets and field trips that are going on this month. So Libra, let's jump in and talk about what October's got in store for you. First of all, at the beginning of the month, we've got a full moon in the energy of Aries, so just across the street from you. So we've got it in the seventh house space. Now, Mars is also retrograde in this particular area and the ruler of this particular moon. So the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. We're going to create a shift here, and we can create a shift here because the full moon sheds so much light in this particular area. So in terms of relationships, conscious, chosen, one-on-one -on -one relationships, this includes your open enemies. If you're going through a legal case, a divorce, got problems at home or work, you know who this other person is and this energy is working there for you as well. Now what it seems to be trying to do is truly, you know, if you happen to be in a situation that is not moving forward, not healthy, not whatever, this may give you the, um, the encouragement to shift this particular area. You know, can it be shifted? Can you put some more life back into it? Are you motivated? Mars is retrograde. Are you even motivated to work on this area? And if the answer you find out is no, I'm not motivated. I don't really have the desire to make this change in this relationship, or I don't want to make the changes necessarily for this relationship to be healthy, you may decide to let a significant relationship in your life go, put it down, put it on pause, whatever it is. And I actually like that moon for this because it is kind of a moon in Aries, even though Mars is retrograde, to cut dead weight from your life and from your emotions and your physical and spiritual space if it's not going to be able to be healthy and viable. So it might be um, an adjustment doesn't have to be an ending, but it might be a very big adjustment to some kind of personal connection that you've got going on. On the second, we see Venus moving into the energy of Virgo. So that slides up back here into the 12th house space. Venus in Virgo is very meticulous. And this is not Venus's most comfortable placement, but she does get serious and she does get meticulous about what's going on. Now, what you're looking at are 12th house things. Do you have some secrets over here? This is where I go with the 12th house space. And it doesn't mean they have to be bad secrets at all. But what skeletons are living in the closet? Because Venus is going to help you with um, this Virgo energy. So she's going to gently lead you to see the truth, gently see the details, gently see the discernment or the priority of what's going on over here so that you can do something useful with it as it comes into this first house light down the road. The other thing I keep thinking of in the 12th house is Venus here may very much so just encourage your rest. If you need rest, if you need recuperation, if you need some downtime 
in some way, shape, or form. This may be that time where Venus is in Virgo here and you're like, my priority is to rest and to rejuvenate myself, to get back to my practice, to treat my um, spiritual health, to take care of illnesses I've had, maybe make sure my mental health and wellness is on board, maybe take care of my grandparents, my animals, things like that. You'll be driven, I think, with Venus's magnetism to go back to the quiet places and make sure they're nice and in balance. On the 4th, we're going to welcome Pluto out of retrograde, and now we've got the whole Capricorn Council out of retrograde. So Pluto direct here in the 4th house space. While Pluto was retrograde, he was helping you tear down and transform and recreate the 4th house area of your life so that now as he's direct, the desires that you have, the deep desires, maybe fears that you've had in this particular area, they're up there on the surface and they're available to be worked on. You are transformed, so you're seeing this area of your life with different eyes as well. So for some of you, truly, if a housing situation, just flat out, a housing situation wasn't working for you anymore, you could genuinely be starting to make that shift forward as Pluto comes direct. Now, I also think too, in terms of that internal psychological foundation, if you are in a place where you are shedding dead weight this month, where you're like, okay, I've seen it. I've been with it for months. This is just not where I want to be, or I'm really ready to step up. You're doing it transformed from the inside out. So watch for those changes that very much so be available. The last thing I say in this fourth house area, just thinking about the fact that um, Pluto also is the ruler of your second house space in the general, Scorpio. Um, I'm wondering if you, if you are not truly changing your finances or changing where you live in some way, something about the finances, maybe where you live or the value of where you live is changing. And it's almost like it's on a little bit of a detox in this area as well. On the 13th, we see Mercury taking that retrograde in the energy of Scorpio at 12 degrees. So right here in your second house, Mercury retrograde in Scorpio, truly getting to the depths, no superficial answers about what's going on with your money, what's going on with your self-esteem, what's going on with how you are using your creative skills in the world, what's going on with how you are being treated and treating others in the world, because this comes from a place of self-love, self-value in this particular area. So as Mercury is retrograde here, you could definitely be taking a relook at these areas. I will tell you too, because Mercury is retrograde and because he's retrograde in your second house, if you do make a big purchase or a big investment, it's fine. You do you. Do what is right for your life. But just know that because it's happening during a retrograde, you may have to look at it or look at that receipt or look at that warranty more than once. And that doesn't make it bad. It just means understand that the retrograde will need eyes on it again. Okay. On the 16th, we've got a new moon happening in your sign, 24 degrees of Libra. And this moon in conjunction with the full moon that happened at the beginning of the month makes me think that Libra, what you're doing here is you're planting your seeds of intention at the new moon for your new plans, range, long range plans and goals. What do you want? What are your desires out in the world? How do you want us to know you? How do you want to show up? We identify you when you come in the room. What do we call you? Right, Libra, what do we know you as? And what are your goals? What are your ambitions? Even with this new moon happening here in the first house, maybe in the ambition is your body. You want to change something about your body, your physical form, your external environments in some way, shape or form. But at this new moon, as you plant, what we see is that Libra is trying to come out a little bit different. We see that you are ready to start afresh in this next four weeks in a different form and fashion than we've seen you in in quite some time. A lot of the identity lives in the first house. So I ask you, Libra, what are you creating? What are you trying to create right now? On the 22nd, the sun's going to move into the energy of Scorpio up there with Mercury, who's going to move on in a couple days, but he's here right now. So the sun brings light, heat, life, and vitality. And as you're looking back at your finances with Mercury, but you're beaming with motivation with your finances and second house value related issues with the sun here it's almost kind of the best of both worlds where you're so motivated to have this area of of your life be deep be rich be full that as mercury is retrograde here in this sun space as well you're going oh okay if i detox this or if i let this go i can actually raise my vibration i can raise my self-esteem i can raise my finances in some way and the sun is so motivated at this time to do that that this is literally a shift a transformational energy for you to work with at this time on the 24th, I just mentioned this because I feel like it's a pop-out day that I want to tell you about, but on the 24th, we've got Venus trining Saturn and Capricorn. Now, this is a day where I just tell you, 
commitments that you make this day, especially between your houses where Venus lies and where Saturn lies. So grab your chart and check that out. Those two houses are having a conversation where if you make an agreement on those types of issues, long range planning, long range success is usually available for decisions made and commitments made under that particular energy. On the 27th, we see Mercury now in that retrograde path coming back into your sign, into the energy of Libra. So now with depth, you are going back over you, going back over your fears, going back your holdups, your hesitations, going over where you have transformed. Where is even your mind transformed from the beginning of the year until now? Where does it need to transform, right? Where, Libra, does your whole identity need to take a shift so that as this retrograde is over, you're able and ready to come out in a different form. You're able to come out with depth. You're able to come out detoxed, refreshed, shoulders down, ready to rock and roll, ready to be a part of that community, make the difference that you need to make. This retrograde, I think, very much so gives you an opportunity of time to make those adjustments and those assessments, okay? On the 31st, we're going to end the month with a full moon happening in the energy of Taurus, but right there in conjunction with Uranus. So this lights up your eighth house space. Now this Uranus adds the element to this full moon of surprise or unexpected, and that's not always bad, right? It's sometimes we need a shakeup, especially because this is in your eighth house space of joint resources, joint connections, um, deep fears, deep healing, astrology, all of those kinds of things that live in that very scorpionic eighth house kind of vibe. Um, if this area has been ignored or if you just have not had your eyes on this area, what Uranus can do is come around and create chaos because the adjustments weren't made before and it doesn't mean that you were purposely not acknowledging something maybe you just didn't know now Uranus is retrograde so is there a decision that you made in the past and now Uranus is going to pop it up and you need to uh, make corrections with that at this particular time because now you've got this full moon so whatever comes up you'll have a lot of light around it you won't be able to say oh I didn't know maybe it's like oh I didn't think about that like that at that time um, but now you'll be assured of the steps that you're going to need to take to move this area forward to maybe clean up something that happened in the past. You know, did you, um, you know, did you pay your taxes? Did you, um, did you get your, your testing this year to make sure your sexual health is in order? Any of those kinds of things, your honest could definitely show up at this moon with a surprise. Now, just as, as much as that is possible to just have those surprise energies of kind of cleanup, I also think it's op an opportunity to have the surprise where people are like, yeah, I would love to collaborate with you. Yes, I would love to invest with you. Yes, I would love to make a longer term commitment here with you to build something. So there are a couple variables that will, will stumble in here and most of them just depend on what's actually happening in your chart. But you can watch for those energies to show up with this Uranian kind of surprise, not just at this time, but over the next four weeks. So full moon to full moon, watch what's happening here, okay? All right, my beautiful Libra friends, I do think it's going to be a usable month. I think you're going to shed some dead weight this month if it is just not available to be viable anymore. I think that this month um, gives you the sense of, okay, I think I'm ready to put it down, which is all for the good, right? All right, Libras, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I look forward to seeing you with Astrology University, the speaker series on Patreon and in the Eat and Greet. So I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye, everyone.